Hello and welcome to the Illuminate podcast. I am your host, Brian M. Truskowski with Illuminate. Today, my guest is Luna Sol, a proud witch, activist, consultant, heading a global company on transformational practices, the happy holder of three passports as evidence that the nation state is a fantasy and hopeless, uh, that nation state is a fantasy and a hopeless music and dance addict. I love that. Luna Sol was born and raised as a witch in Chile with a strong magical influence from both the indigenous Chilean culture and the Italian witch lines. She was initiated by her grandmother and has practiced her whole life. After moving to the US when she was 18, she studied as a solo practitioner with a coven in upstate New York in the late 90s and with the reclaiming tradition in the SF Bay Area for about 17 years. She is not currently a member of a coven, but is the high priestess for a handful of solo practitioners. Luna Sol is a communications expert with 30 years of experience in emotional growth techniques, spiritual development tools, healing, ritual, activism, and having a whole lot of fun doing it. And that's the best part. She has worked with so many tools, traditions in her spiritual practice, including intuitive readings, healings, spell casting, Reiki, shamanic work, vision quest, past life, constellations, and the Tarot. In another life, as Maritza Schaefer, she works as a communications and organizational consultant with her colleagues at wisebridge.org. All of these things inform her writing about what it will take for us to live decent lives as individuals in this as a species and to save it as it is a collection. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today, Luna, Luna Sol. Hey, Brian, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So just give the, we, there was a good bio, but just fill in, fill in the guests, a uh, little viewers. What, tell us a little bit more about you. Sure. So I am a witch and I work magic and I have a bunch of spiritual tools that I use in my daily life that have allowed me to build a really beautiful life for myself that I really enjoy and I'm really fortunate to have. And I'm also an activist. And so I work, um, in social change. That's how I spend my days. I believe that we could be doing a lot better as a species and for the earth. And I also believe that we're doing really well when you look at it from a certain angle. And so paradox being the organizing principle of life is something that I work both in my spiritual practice, uh, helping clients grow spiritually, um, satisfying their curiosity about how to work energy, helping them learn about how to walk a spiritual path. But I also help individuals and specifically organizations that are working on social change. So I work on things like racial justice issues. I do organizational development work for organizations that want to have um, more diverse and inclusive staff and don't know exactly how to do it. And for a long time, I really... I felt kind of stuck between these two personas, right? Like I operate in the default world as Maritza Schaefer and I'm doing really good in what I offer the world in terms of helping organizations uh, become really effective as change makers. But I also work magic and I'm super proud to be a witch. And so I operate under my priestess name, which is Luna Sol. And, um, and, I, and I'm really excited to be at a place in my life where I'm comfortable understanding that both are as valid, as necessary, as useful to the world. And, and that's just how it is. And it's to my benefit and to everybody's benefit, really, if I'm in acceptance of that and, and acknowledge all parts of our experience as humans, you know? Absolutely. And I just want to say, I want to honor you for taking the esoteric and the third dimensional world and finding a way to sort of like merge them together and support them. Because we've known for, for antiquity that the esoteric exists, the spiritual practices exist, and trying to bring that into the, the, the real world and make it practically applicable. I just think that's brilliant. I just think that's so awesome. And I, I'm really curious to see how how, how that will unfold in time, especially with these political activism and et cetera. So that's just, that's awesome. I just want to say like, keep it up sister. That's great. <laughs> you appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to go into the questions now, if that works. Sure. So cool. So the first question, this is sort of my favorite is what are three things that are important to you that you feel passionate about that you really don't really hear 
uh, being discussed very much on the global platform? Well, um, I don't know if they're things, but really more maybe concepts. One that I already mentioned, I genuinely believe in my bones that paradox is the organizing principle of life. And when I believe that, I can love more openly and I can love more fully. And I believe that that connectedness and embodiment of love is what we really, is what I need to be healthy and happy and is what the world needs to find a better way. And so by paradox, I mean things that are seemingly contradictory and can be true at the same time. Um, so I just shared a little bit of the example. I, I had a really hard time coming to terms with the fact that I can be very strategic and very analytical and like very sharp operating in a pseudo corporate environment for lack of a better term and bring to it a decolonizing strategy lens, bring to it a, an open heart, bring to it a depth of intuition and that doesn't make the strategy any less valid and it doesn't make the magic any less magical. But that's, that's a lot of work, right? To incorporate those things and to, to really embody the paradox. And I think that it plays out in all aspects of our lives, particularly when I need to remember that I may do messed up things, but that doesn't make me a messed up person, right? right. Owning the paradox that you might not be the upstanding human that I want you to be 100% of the time, and that doesn't make you any less human, allows me to love you anyway and to love you openly with compassion and particularly for myself first and then for the rest of people. So this idea that, you know, that dichotomy and all religions talk about this, this idea that it's either black or white or male or female is a very useful organizing principle for our brains because humans can't grocery shop and raise children and run businesses if they're in a hundred percent connection with the ultimate reality of existence because it would just melt our brains, right? Like love and the source of it all is beautiful and unspeakable not because it's a secret but because it's overwhelming and so in order to operate we need these boxes and and um ways of qualifying each other but let's not forget that those are models they're not the reality and so so that's one thing yeah I mean, can i can I reflect on some of that of course of so course the last thing i'll just start at the back and go towards the beginning is yeah, yeah, yeah. uh I have a video and I did about this, like, are, are labels important, right? Are labels important? Sometimes they're, they're confining, but at the same time, sometimes they're liberating, right? Depending on what perspective you're sort of taking on it. Um, because you're right, sometimes it's like, okay, well, who, uh, a label's important sometimes so I can have a direction, but after that, it's like, we just need to drop the labels and just be authentically, you know, who, who we are. Right. And, and really quick, just for the viewers, say it again, because this was, I want to write it down. What what was the, the quote on paradox that you said again? The world is paradoxical. Paradox is life's organizing principle. So like those like your idea, Brian, that labels are both confining and liberating. Actually, both are true. And yeah. how do we feel comfortable with that and not be like, no, but which one is it? It's yeah. neither and it's both. And most of life is like that. And that's the challenge of being human. It's evolving and growing and accepting what is without getting all violent about it, you know? Well, and there's a word for that that I've been playing with recently is contronym. Contronym is a word that has two opposing definitions to it. Nice. Like, like to bound, right? Bound is either to leap away from something or to constrict something. So it, it, it's another great word for me. And then the last thing I just want to say is, again, it's kind of paired off what I first said is, thank you for living in the two worlds, being the witch and the muggle at the same, or being a witch and working in the muggle world and kind of playing that dual role. I will say that I struggle with that too a lot of times, trying to figure out like how to work those two and how to navigate the two and using empowerment tools to sort of bridge the bridge the gap in a way. So absolutely. So awesome. What was that? Did you say this, uh, what's your second thing? Actually, I just thought of it because of what you said. The second thing is that speaking truth is the path of liberation. And the reason I'm saying that is because when I find myself, and this is all in my head, right? This is like me self-terrorizing. When I find myself in a situation where I'm like, oh, what are they going to think? Like, am I going to be professional enough? Or I'm going to be esoteric enough? If I just own it and I'm like, look, this is what I bring. 
somebody else in the room is usually thinking the same thing and it's so liberating to have that common experience as people you know to be like you know what we're all complicated none of us fit in one little label we all have many we can have even the opposing label at the same time i think that's why these times politically and socio-culturally are so challenging for us because all of those boxes that have not really been at the service of everybody's liberation are exploding and people are very confused right we have we have mobility amongst labels in ways that we didn't used to. We're, quant we're wondering what race actually means. Gender, which was supposed to be very rigid for a long time, we're finally acknowledging that, you know what, that was just like a little bit of a lie we were telling ourselves for the benefit of a few, how can we do it differently? And it's just, and, and, and we hate uncertainty. Humans just want to know. And it's a biologically evolutionary thing, right? Like I want to know, where all the exits from the cave are in case the tiger comes, like I don't get eaten. And so we want to know, be in control, know what's happening. And so that's why I feel it's a spiritual practice. It's a bit transcending my human incarnation, my meat suit, right? To, to understand that that's an illusion. And the paradox is that, and I still need to eat and I need, I still need to sleep. I'm still embodied. How do I take care of both? Absolutely. And that just speaks to the paradox that you said earlier, right? Like, how can it be spiritual and human at the same time? And sometimes battling those two and, and integrating them is definitely a challenge. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Absolutely. Because you know, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience in this meat soup. At the same time, I need to pay bills and I need to focus on the car that I'm driving. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and not whatever, right? Yeah. So... Yeah. yeah, totally. And that takes me to my third point is that I feel particularly in the context of the US, we're not in a happy place, like the rise of fascism, of authoritarianism, of um, oppression and violence is real. And I just call that out every chance I get because the way these things happen at a political level is when we try to pretend like it's not happening or we're too scared of talking about it. I am terrified of the political situation in the US and while I can't do everything about it, I can do something about it. And so anybody who's watching this, I invite you to find a way to do the same thing because it's not gonna sort itself out. We're gonna sort it out. Right. Well, and it's that sort of, for me, it's that balance between action and inaction, right? I don't wanna like, I can't commit my whole life to something I can, but then at, at the detriment of what, right? So it's about keeping balance within the balance, right? Do your action, do your work, you know? And, and I'm curious, I'm gonna ask you a question. This is a, a comment after that is, I have a spiritual teacher that says, you know, sometimes doing action is doing your inner work, right? Doing your inner work, shining your light, working the grids and doing the inner work. And I really feel like that's my path. And there's some people whose work and action in this, in this world and time is to get out there and do the protesting and create movement on that level. Um, I truly believe that. And I'm, I'm curious for your reflection on that. Oh, I think that's absolutely correct. I mean, like somebody's got to be feeding the children. Somebody's got to be cleaning the roads or doing whatever piece, you know, I'm not, I, again, like, I don't believe that we can each do everything, but we can do something. And so what you cannot do is not participate, right? Like if you have a calling, if you have a particular purpose, if you think you can contribute to your community in a very specific way, that's what you need to be doing. But you cannot be doing it out of fear, out of laziness, out of not willing to walk the path. And I would say that in this context, even if it's a tiny little bit, nobody needs, nobody's asking you to like go put your body on the line if you don't feel safe doing that or anything like that but you cannot ignore the political aspect of it. I do not believe the path is complete. I believe it's lopsided if it's, if it's not looking at the whole. So when I look at the whole, I don't try to address it all at once. Like maybe 90% of my attention is meditating and modeling in my community how to manage my own emotional range so I can be a loving, grounding presence for the community, right? And maybe only 10% is... Um, whatever, some external feeding the poor, if you will, or uh, uh, registering people to vote or whatever. Um, but it has to be something. Like, I don't believe that you can ignore the external context at this. 
at this stage. It's an invitation. Of course you can, but I feel that that's why we're in trouble. So right. as much as you can stretch yourself, that's the invitation. Yeah, we, we can't sit in our closets and own the world to peace. We need to actually get out there and do do something to some degree. You know, if it's supporting community members emotionally, holding that's circle, right. you know, ha holding ceremony, whatever it is. Yeah, we need to be doing right. something. So, absolutely, awesome. Well, thank you for that. So the the next bank of questions is, um, what are three things, or what are three things that you're uh, passionate about that you realize either a you are really missing in the absence of social connection or what are three unique things that you would do differently knowing what you know now about the social condition that we have with with lockdown and with covid um well in san francisco every may there is a carnival in the mission district and i've danced it many 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 times and needless to say this year it didn't happen and I missed it so much more terribly than I anticipated because it's not about how fun it is to get dressed up in these beautiful costumes and dance outdoors to live music or whatever, like that's fantastic. But there's a certain energy that gets generated when there's large groups of people together in public spaces being joyful that I just really miss, particularly this idea of community in public being joyful together is is very hard to recreate otherwise and i think it's very healing for communities and for people as individuals as well so that i really miss a lot i am never home i'm always doing a zillion things i'm very social and so if you would have told me a year ago you're gonna be locked in the house for six months i would have been like oh my god no way i'm gonna totally flip out and it's been amazing like i I have actually almost enjoyed it in a way that I could have never anticipated because it's really not who I thought I was, right? I think of myself as very outgoing, very extroverted, very social. I love doing things and la, la, la. And yet, um, you know, and I do, I do love all those things. And the minute I get the chance, I want to do them again. But I didn't think that solitude and quiet would be so profoundly enjoyable rather than just endurable. Um, so that was a surprise. And I find um, people are having all kinds of different reactions. I have friends that are like, I thought this would be great to just be home and I'm ready to like kill my family. So that's also happening. There's all kinds of, of reactions, right? Um, and also just human touch, you know, like I, not just like friends and family or loved ones, but I'm like a very touchy person in general. And, uh, and that feels super awkward. It's just quite weird to like keep a distance. Um, and I also believe in science. Like I believe science will catch up with spirituality at some point and we will have explanations for the mysteries that we just work intuitively right now. Uh, but until then, we do have explanations for some other things like viruses, for instance, you know? So I think it's, it's good that we're, well, trying, some places trying to do something to keep people healthy as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I want to just want to touch on what you just said about the introvert extrovert thing. Like I kind of go back and forth, but in this time I've actually been enjoying the introvert more, mm -hmm. right? And when I do have desire to go out, I have a few people in my close circle that I can, I can visit in that. Um, but I think like for me and a lot of people, they're using this time of introversion and I hope they are using it to do the inner work and to reinvent yourself and do something productive. Uh, what I hope people aren't doing in mass is just numbing out. And I know that is happening, right? Watching TV, social media, alcohol, drugs, whatever. I know suicides are definitely on the rise right now, but I, I really want to encourage people. If you're in that transition phase, like please sit with yourself and do the inner work, find the community and find the support to do it. You know, don't just sit back and, let it let this time go to waste I mean, that's how i personally feel no totally i totally agree i have a a tense situation with that because i think that you know this idea of waste is very interesting you know it's like people are drinking and watching movies or whatever because they can't really cope but the moment you're ready there's healthier ways to cope and i think that's your invitation you know my experience is that i can't do anything alone like really i can't do anything alone and right now when we're all feeling weirded out, stressed, scared, tired, whatever it might be. Let me just say like, not necessarily positive things that we usually associate with positive feelings, right? 
it's more important than ever to reach out and be a part of a community or have some people to talk with. And so that's, I think, super critical right now. I think that if um, balance, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a seeker of balance. I don't think it's a state, it's a path, right? I'm, there's always a ball in the air and you're trying to catch it in this, for me in this life. And so I know very little about this, but I do know that it's important. Like when I'm doing, like, if I just want to sit on the couch and watch TV and eat the chocolate, that's fine to an extent. And so back to my point of tell the truth and how liberating it is. If you're like, you know what? I'm burned out this afternoon. This is what it's like. Sure. But if it's been longer than you wanted it to be, get help. Yeah. Like talk to people. We're all in it together and we're all affected profoundly differently, which is why we take turns supporting each other. Yeah. Or at least that's the hope. Absolutely. And, and I'll just raise my hand to say, was it last week here in, in, in Michigan? It was in the 90s or, and plus all week. And I had no desire other than to sit in the house with the air conditioning on and binge watch YouTube videos, you know? And, and it was hard for me because I'm just this go, 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 go person. And I said, okay. And I even checked in with my supports and they said, Brian, it's actually a healthy thing for you to actually just stop, slow the F down and do nothing for a minute and just recharge. It's okay. <laughs> You know, but that only lasted for about three or four days. And I'm like, okay, I gotta, gotta go again. But when I was in it, I was honoring the uncomfortable of how it felt to just be in that. It was really weird. I'm like, okay, this is uncomfortable, but is it detrimental? No, right? And it's using that discernment and the discretion. So that's right. Yeah. Awesome. So anything else you want to say in that before we move on or? No, I'm good. Cool. And then just the last thing is, is what is one message that you want to share from your heart with the world? If you had a platform and the entire world was listening right now, what, I mean, you kind of already have that, but what is one thing you just want to share with the world that is coming from your heart that you want the world to know? There's a quote that I wish was mine, but it's not. Alejandro Jodorowsky said this, says it all the time. He's on Twitter. He's amazing. You can follow him. He's a Chilean mystic and filmmaker and he says you cannot change the world but you can begin to change it mm. and i find that really inspiring because so many times i've been in this conversation about like well why are we going to do that like it's not going to do anything and it's true that it's not going to do as much as we want it to do maybe before the end of the day or the end of my natural life but it will do something and it's not my job to judge the outcome of my work and my intention. My job is to have the right intention and to do the work. And so I have no idea, really, it's a very humbling position to have this understanding that whatever it is that I'm doing for myself or for the world and my community, I can't really tell how well it's going to work in quotes, right? If it's going to have enough impact or can we measure it? As opposed to not doing it, I mean, like that's you know that's not that's not an option either. So so it's an invitation to explore faith and like do things that are magical because they feel like they're the right thing, even if you don't have the evidence for them. Absolutely, and, and I agree with you. And there's a quote that I use that's similar to that, um, and I forget who who said it was. <clears throat> Those who plant a tree recognize they'll never sit beneath the shade nor bear the fruit of that gift, but it's passed on to the future generation, right? And so that's kind of like what you're saying. It doesn't matter if we're holding circle, casting spells, rituals, doing Reiki and others, we're protesting. The impact we're creating now is going to have exponential impact through time. So That's right. That's right. And in the action, which sometimes is in action or rest, Oh, you know, um, <laughs> is where we get, is where I get meaning and satisfaction and fulfillment. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show, Luna Sol. So I have one last question is um, any parting words that you want to share? And secondly, um, how can people get a hold of you? Contact information, websites, et cetera. And we'll share that in the information below. Great. Thank you so much, Brian. So yes, uh, what I want to say is that if you don't know what magic is or do not know how to work magic or don't believe that spells are real or energy work sounds um, very mysterious or like a bunch of BS, get a hold of me because I promise you if you have these tools, your life is going to be so much better. And I um, 
it's a totally selfish motive because like I am so happy when I get to share these things with people and, and see them find their power and their voice and develop a practice that makes their uh, physical, real life, their um, earthly activities become so much easier and so much more fulfilling. So yeah, I offer all those things. Um, and you can reach me at brujalunasol.com, B-R-U-J-A-L-U-N-A-S-O-L. Dot com. I'm like, is that how you spell that in English? It is. <laughs> Brujalunasol.com. I'm also on Instagram and it's been a pleasure, Brian. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lunasol. Yes. So thank you all for listening. I appreciate all this. And like I say in previous shows, this is about starting conversation, continuing conversation. So if anything in the show inspired you, motivated you, continue the conversation with your own community, with your own friends and family, share this video, share the message and just and share the love. Thank you all for listening. I love all of you. Get out there and make a beautiful and blessed day. Thank you so much.